Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're watching for the very first time, my name is Stacia and I go by Namaste on Instagram. So if you're interested in keeping up with my day-to-day -day life, go ahead and check me out over there on the gram. If you're new to my channel, I hope that you consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I have a new upload. So as you can see by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that you can expect being an ALT in Japan. In August of this year, it'll mark my two years anniversary of being in Japan. And for the duration of my time here, I've spent my professional career being an ALT. So hopefully this video will be helpful to those who are thinking about coming to Japan to teach or you've already gotten through with a program to come here to teach as an ALT. So if the light comes in and out, that's because of the sun. I'm using the natural light today. So I apologize for that in advance if that's an issue. And I do want to say also that each LT experience is going to be very different. So you can watch a plethora of videos on here, but at the end of the day, your experience is chances are it's going to be very different from the other person and it is dependent on a lot of things that we'll get into later on in this video so i wanted to start off this section of the video by talking about teachers and your overall workplace now, in my experience i i think i've come across three kinds of teachers. I want to talk about experience. I'm talking about my personal experience as well as the experience that I have vicariously through the persons with whom I interact with. So in my opinion, there are three kinds of Japanese teachers that you might interact with or come across. Number one is the dogmatic teacher or the authoritarian. Now, this is the kind of teacher who will control every single aspect of the teaching and planning experience. So this person plans everything, does everything, and will basically give you an instruction as to what you're supposed to do. Now that can be a good or bad thing depending on the attitude of the teacher and also depending on your own attitude as well. So this is one teacher that you might come across. This teacher is dogmatic. They, are, they have an authoritarian approach to teaching and learning. They feel like they are more than qualified enough to teach it. And sometimes they may give up the impression that you are a bother to them and they don't need you because they're good, already good at what they're doing. Now, the second teacher is the cooperative or the collaborative teacher. Now, this is the kind of teacher who will be more welcoming to you providing recommendations. They will ask for your opinions. They will incorporate you in the lesson. And so you might find that with this teacher, you might be doing a lot of team teaching or this teacher might ask you to cover one half of the lesson and they do the other half of the lesson. So this is another kind of teacher that you might come across when you're teaching as an ALT in Japan. Now the third and final kind of teacher that you might come across is the teacher who is nonchalant. Now this is the kind of teacher who either has no confidence in their English, two, just don't care much about teaching, or three, they just feel like since you're the native speaker, you should be the one who does everything. So with this teacher, you're literally doing every single thing. You're planning, you're marking papers, you're doing everything. So basically, you essentially get a topic from that teacher and that is literally their input to the entire lesson. They'll show up, they won't inquire anything about what lesson plan that you have, what activities that you plan to do. They'll just show up to the lesson and you basically run the show for that. So when you're coming to Japan, do not expect that all the teachers are going to be cooperative and nice. Be open-minded to the kind of experience that you're going to have. That is definitely something that you should keep in mind because like I said, these are the three kinds of teachers that I've come across or I think are the three kinds of teachers you might interact with. If you are an ALT in Japan and you have another category of teacher that I missed out, leave that in the comment section below. But I think those are the three broad categories of teachers who you're going to have to deal with. So that's for teachers. When it comes on to workplace, uh, for the most part, you're expected to be on time, like with everywhere else in the world, you're expected to be on time. In Japan, time is a big thing here. People respect time. And if you're coming from a place, for example, like Jamaica, where people, I'm not saying everyone has blatant disregard for time, but 
here there is more emphasis on time. So you are expected to arrive at work at least 10 minutes before your contractual time begins so that you can be settled and prepared for the lessons that you have to teach. Now, when you arrive, again, depending on the teachers that you're working with, you might have a teacher that, and this is my case, where you go to work on time and she comes into the staff room and she says, Sejra Sensei, we have five classes today and with each of these classes, we're going to do this, this, that and that. Please do so and so and so. Or she'll ask, did you check the papers from last class? We will want to give it back to the students. So you might have those situations where the teachers collaborate with you or have conversations with you about what your day is going to look like. You might also want to arrive on time so that you can prepare for the day and to just go over your schedule to make sure that you are adequately prepared. Usually, well. more often than not, and again, if you're an ALT in Japan and your experience is different, go ahead and sound off in the comment section below. Usually with the most schools, you have access to most, if not all of the resources. That is the printer, the faxing machine, and so on and so forth. So one of the advice I want to give you guys, because I've seen this happen to people before, because you are given access to the resources, do not take that as an opportunity to abuse the access that you have been given. Now I've seen or, or I've heard of situations where people had access to, for example, the printer or the laminating machine, and they laminated 600 pieces of papers in a single day. That's crazy. So by the end of the day, the company gave him a call to tell him that you're doing too much. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about in terms of what you should expect when you come to Japan is the, I want to say poor communication, but I, I don't think that's the correct verbiage. So I'm going to say the difference in communication style. Now, I don't know if you guys know about this, but they have two, they have these two phrases, right? One is tatemai and the, one, the other one is hone. Now, hone is the, the, the true thoughts of someone. And then tatemai is the sugar-coated version or the thing that they say in order to appease you or to basically stroke your ego. So one of the things you can expect is that people will not, not just in the workplace, but in general life, chances are that eight or nine out of ten chances that people will not tell you their true feelings. And so what that means is that you could plan a lesson, teach it, and you'll say, oh, so-and-so sensei, how was the lesson? Oh, it was so good. No, a lot of persons might say, well, that's common. But in Japan, it's times 10 or times 100 when it comes down to that. And I've had a situation where, not me personally, but a friend of mine, who worked with a person who had a problem with something that she did and the teacher said nothing to her for the entire year or the entire duration that she was at that school. Now, when it was at the end of the year when she was supposed to renew her contract, all of the things that the teacher had a problem with was brought up in that meeting with the teacher who had the problem being absent. So they aren't confrontational people, they aren't straightforward people. And so a lot, you have to master the art of reading between the lines because they seldom speak their mind and the ones who speak their minds are usually the ones who have lived outside of Japan and so that's one thing I have to have to prepare you for or have you know about teaching in Japan and what you should expect they will make you feel like you are the best ALT to ever graze the land of the rising sun but deep down they think you are trash and i hate it because if it is that you can tell me something to improve my ability to perform within the classroom as an alt i want to know but here they think it's going to somehow i don't know i'm not japanese i don't even know the rationale behind it so Tatama is a huge thing here. But be prepared for the poor level of communication. And I think it, it's their way of rationalizing it is being polite, the, the whole politeness of it all. And, and so that's something that you definitely have to, to keep in mind that their 
opinions might not be their honest opinions of you or whatever it is that you might okay one of the other things i wanted to touch on before we move on to the next segment in terms of workplace because you are an alt chances are you're going to be feel you're going to feel some level of isolation and before i move on i did do a video on 10 reasons why teaching in japan might not be for you so if you're interested i will leave that in the cards above so that you can check that out in your time or after this video so that you can weigh all your options before coming to japan so that's a very helpful video that kind of gives you a heads up about what to expect when it comes on to teaching in Japan and why it might not be for you. So as I would say, one of the big things with being an LT here that you should expect when you come, irrespective of how fun and vivacious you are, chances are you're going to have, feel some level of isolation. And I think that's going to be pretty normal with any society that you're entering. I think it magnifies even more if you're in a country like Japan where your, your native language is English and their language is Japanese. So expect to feel some level of isolation. You're not involved in decision making. So you're going to be excluded from a lot of things. And sometimes there are events, again, depending on your school, depending on the relationship that you have with your school. You're going to be exempted or excluded from certain activities so certain activities will be held and you don't even know about it you just see everyone getting ready going somewhere and no one tells you what's happening be prepared for everyone to get a memo of some sort and you're in not in the know unless someone is at the school who cares about you enough or respects you enough to give you a heads up about what's happening outside of that you're going to be isolated now I wanted to move on to the classroom environment. Now, like I said before, it depend it's dependent on where you are and what level you're teaching at. Now, I know I say that very often, but the truth is that is the case. Now, your students and their level of exposure will also determine how, how they react to you is what I'm trying to say. So I live closer to the city area of Japan. And so even though I get the stairs, even though I get people not wanting to sit beside me, even though I get children staring at me, what have you, they are more used to seeing non-Japanese persons than persons in probably deep rural Japan. And so I say that to say that the classroom environment it's going to be hinged on that amongst other things. So in a typical Japanese classroom, you will find that there are about 35 to 40 students. Again, dependent on where you are, there are situations where you might have five students in deep rural Japan. But in the city area where I am at, where the population of students or the population of children is much higher, I have 35, about 30 to 40 students, there about. So the classroom size is fairly big. In addition to that, you're going to be teaching lessons anywhere from between 45 to 50 minutes. And with the whole COVID, um, we've had classes being cut from 50 to 45 minutes. And I know with elementary schools, I believe if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong. Elementary schools usually have 45 minutes classes and then with the COVID, it was like 30 minutes. So again, the time that you spend in the classroom is dependent on the level you're teaching and the school that you're at each school each boe which means boards of education will determine just how much time is spent in the classroom. another thing that i think you should be aware of is the fact that you usually teach with anywhere between three to five lessons a day now that that aside with the classroom environment expect that in the first stages of you being introduced to them you being their teacher that they might come across as very standoffish because they're very shy a lot of them are very timid and if you know anything about japanese people a lot of them are very afraid of making the first move and so i would suggest that if you're coming here to teach that you come with one an open mind and a willingness to make the first step especially when it comes down to teaching students the minute you begin to learn their names the minute you begin to make them feel comfortable classroom environment in terms of its mood can change drastically when you do do things like that 
Another thing is while you're in the classroom, because so many students aren't interested in English, you'll find that once it's English time, many of them slack off. They take the time to gossip, they take the time to sleep, they take the time to do everything but English. So expect that to be the case. And I know people have this perception of Japanese children that they are the epitome of what children should be. And to some extent, they are decent students, especially when compared to the ones that I've taught in my experience in the Jamaican system. They aren't as bad as the students are, but that does not mean that they aren't rude and feisty. So don't expect them to be angels sent from above with this pristine personality. Don't expect that. I've had situations where I've had to count to 10. I've had to ignore a few things because sis was trying it. So if you're coming here, expect that children here are children just like everywhere else in the world. Do not come with the expectation that your classes are going to be just perfect all the time. Just roll with the punches as they come and just try to take everything with a grain of salt. That's the best thing I can also, tell you. Also, one of the key things I want to mention to you. Now, I've spoken about the fact that many students are shy and they are reluctant to, to get to know you or to speak in the initial stages. One of the pervasive things with, when it comes down to Japanese children is the fact that they are... There's something ingrained in their culture and it's something that's inculcated at a very young age where perfection is expected at every turn and corner. And so if a child thinks in his or her mind that he or she is going to make a mistake, there's an 8 out of 10 chance or 9 out of 10 chance that that child will not raise his or her hand. Now you'll go into the classroom and you might have one student or two students in, in, in on average, it's usually two or three students who always have your hands up willing to answer the question. And, and those are typically the students who are above grade in terms of their ability to use the English language. So you will find that students are reluctant to answer questions on the advice i want to give you as well is to like i said before be so kind and open that they feel comfortable with not only raising their hands but also making mistakes because i'm telling you i've seen students make mistakes students around them start laughing or nobody's laughing but their disposition changes drastically. The confidence that they had right before they answered the question is totally gone. So you want to make sure that you try to, as much as possible, as much as is human, pos humanly possible, to make them feel like it's, it's a safe space for them to, to, make, to learn by making mistakes. Now, another thing that you should expect in Japan is that sometimes, not all the time, as a foreigner, you're exempted from a lot of things. But you are expected to show up to work even when there is a natural disaster taking place. Now, when I just came here, I was getting used to overall life in Japan. There was a huge typhoon. And I kid you not, you are expected to turn up to work. And I can tell you that you are going to be instructed to, to be asked to turn up to work just as normal and in the likelihood that you will be affected by the weather that means that if it's raining heavily and you are supposed to traverse public transportation in order to get to work you are going to be instructed to take along with you an extra pair of clothes so that you can change when you get to work now here's the absurdity of it all when there's a natural disaster when there's a threat to the safety of the persons within the four walls of the school, students are asked to stay home. And somehow some genius somewhere decides that teachers, inclusive of ALT, needs to be, they need to be at work. For what reason? I, I, to be decided. But if you're coming here, in Jamaica, for example, we have hurricanes and to a lesser extent earthquake. 
Now, if it is that there is torrential rain or hurricane or anything of that nature, we expect to stay home. However, within the Japanese system, based on most board of education too, you are expected to turn up to work. Now, I've seen from my own self, um, people being asked to turn up to work. It doesn't matter if you get there at two, three in the afternoon, try your best to make it there. So if you're coming here, please expect for that to, to happen, for you to be asked to turn up to work, whether or not there's a natural disaster. And I've heard stories of there being a bomb threat and teachers are asked to send students home, but, student, but teachers are expected to stay behind. I'm not sure if the number of teachers being at school will determine whether or not the bomb will detonate but um you're expected to stay behind even if there's a bomb threat while the students get to to go home to safety so that's one thing another thing i wanted to touch on now i've done my research before doing this video i'd watched a few videos to see what other persons have said not many videos on the topic that i'm discussing right now or if they are perhaps my search wasn't as effective as i thought one of the things I've noticed that a lot of persons say is that Japan has a lot of holidays. And this is something that is pervasive in a lot of videos. Now, I'm from Jamaica and I've taught in Jamaica for two to three years before coming to Japan as an ALT. Now, within the Jamaican teaching system, I consider holidays to be like, for example, during summer vacation in Jamaica, we get two months off, Jan July and August. In Japan, you only get August off. Now, I'm used to also in Jamaica, we have midterm break, which is usually a week to two weeks off. So we have that every couple of months. Then for winter vacation, I usually get from like the 10th of December thereabout to about the same, the same time in January. So I'm used to about three weeks to four weeks off from work. Here, it's like a week and a half. And depending on what program you're in, that might be a lot less too. Spring vacation, which is unpaid for a lot of companies, you do not get more than two weeks off. And you might get five days off during Golden Week, dependent, again, on your board of education and the company that you work for. So I don't know where people come up with this idea of a lot. Maybe a lot is subjective to each person and to each his own. But I don't, in my humble opinion, we don't get a lot of holidays. So if you're especially coming from Jamaica, the holidays are not, are not very long. You might have a one day in the middle of the week, which makes absolutely no sense. And sometimes you might have a Friday or a Monday off, which gives you a three day weekend. So when it comes down to holiday, especially if you're a Jamaican and you were a teacher in Jamaica, there aren't, when you compare, there aren't a lot of holidays, but I guess to some people, it's a lot. Okay, so I think I'm going to close up this video, but before I do so, I wanted to, to break down a few things. Now, a lot of persons are coming to Japan for the very first time, and some of you are coming from cultures which are completely different from the one that you know. And I know that sometimes there are persons who are not only coming to a culture that is completely unknown to them, but for some people, they're coming out of university or they're leaving their their house, their parents' house for the very first time. And I know that you might be anxious, you might be excited, you want to be prepared, you want to know as much as you can. I want to say to you guys that your experience is hinged on your own attitudes and your own perception of the world. If you come here with a positive attitude, an open mind and an open heart, then chances are you're increasing the likelihood of you having a good time. Now, I know many persons are here and they always find the negative about life in Japan and their work situation. And I'm not saying that they don't have plausible reason to feel the way that they do, but I would encourage you to one, take the opportunity to, to grow through the good and the bad, to try as best as possible, to see the positive in everything, and not to come here with too many expectations. Try to walk into this new chapter of your life with as little expectations as possible so that you are not disappointed by your experience. Now, teaching in Japan is not for the faint of heart, it's not for the weak. And in as much as the job can be very simple, 
it can also be very challenging in a lot of ways because you're dealing with you're you're dealing with people who think and operate differently from you do so i say all of that to say that you can watch as many videos as you want you can read as many articles as you can but at the end of the day that will not guarantee that your experience is going to be good or bad and i've been asked you know what company should i choose what's teaching in japan like for me it has not been bad because i have been blessed to work at a school that is very accommodating it's very kind and i've been blessed to work with teachers who are more open than the usual japanese person and so i'm able to build relationships with my my japanese teachers not only the ones who i work with but the ones who i don't work with and so i'm grateful for that also i'm one of those people especially being a teacher i crave connecting especially with my students and so i'm hands-on right i'm very deliberate about my interactions with them and so because of that i have students who will make the effort to communicate with me who will make the effort to speak to me to try to get to know me and that's due in part because i make the effort and and i try to get to know them so come here with the mindset that you're going to teach english you're going to do a, a good a job as you can and that is not to say that you need to go above and beyond because I don't go above and beyond. But even, even if you don't give a thousand percent, give enough for you to, to be fulfilled is what I'm trying to say. So I hope that this video was helpful in some way, shape or form. I hope that those who are watching, who have made up their minds and are coming here, that this somewhat helps you to calm your nerves a little bit. Um, I hope that those who are thinking about coming here, that it offers a new perspective and assist in your decision to come to Japan. And those who are already here, go ahead and sound up in the comment section as well and let them know, you know, what should you expect when you're coming to Japan to teach as an ALT? Again, everybody's situation, everybody's experience is different. Just keep that in mind. The sun is going down on me and I'm going to wrap this video up. If you haven't already, Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're on our way to 1,000 subscribers. So I'll appreciate it if you share this video with a friend as well as subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, guys, I will see you in the next video. And stay safe. I love you guys for watching. Bye.